Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm doing another episode in my Building the Shot series. If you guys are not familiar with what that is, it's a video series that I started recently where I basically do everything that I can to describe how a certain photo of mine was created. In this video, we're going to be going over this shot of the beautiful Jenny B that I took at a recent workshop at the beginning of June held by my friend Jeff Benion. Both Jeff and Jenny have YouTube channels of their own, so if you could check them out, I'd really appreciate it. Links will be in the description area below. I've actually already shared this photo on my Instagram for maybe a month now, maybe more than a month. So if you guys want to see my photos first, I definitely recommend you guys check me out on Instagram at fjhphoto. I do my best to make every post educational and I share exclusive behind the scenes footage in my Instagram stories, as well as exclusive tips and on my Instagram posts as well. I've actually started to share straight out of camera shots, which is just unedited shots on my Instagram posts. So in case you guys want to see how my shots look like without any editing or anything at all, definitely follow me on my Instagram and check out those photos there. So back to this shot of the beautiful Jenny B. This is definitely out of the norm for me. I typically work later in the day, not in direct full sun like I did here. So I'm going to do my best to describe all the different choices that I made in re regards to the gear and the settings because I made all these different choices for good reasons. When it comes to the camera that I used, I used the Sony a7R 3 This is a camera that I use because I like all the resolution that it offers and the long battery life that it offers compared to the older Sony cameras. So the camera choice is not too important. The lens that I use is the Sony 85 FE 1.8 lens. I use this whenever I need to travel because it works really well and it's pretty light. I have the Sigma Art 105 1.4 whenever I shoot locally and I have both of these lenses right here so you guys can see exactly why I use the 85 instead of the 105 whenever I travel. One piece of gear that I use for this shot that I typically never use is an ND filter. I use the Tiffin variable ND filter that was stopped down to about six stops and I use this filter on a new product by a company named Alter RFS that is basically a hinge system for your filter so that you can rapidly put the filter onto your lens if you want to use it and if you don't want to use it you can just move the filter away. This is something that was really beneficial for this whole workshop because there was times where I wanted to shoot wide open and I didn't need the filter and there were times where I did need the filter because of how bright the sun was. So I really enjoyed this product and I highly recommend it as well. The light that I used was the Godox 8600 Pro, also known as the Explore 600 Pro by Adorama. This is definitely a light that I needed for the shot because of how bright the sunlight was on that day. There was not a single cloud in the sky and I definitely needed every ounce of power that I could get. And the strongest light that I had was the 600 Pro. I typically shoot manually in case you guys ever wondered if I shoot with TTL or manual. TTL doesn't give you the power readings. So if you ever see a photo that I've taken and I show you exactly or tell you guys exactly what the power output is, that means I shot manually. The modifier that I use for the 600 Pro is a 24 by 24 inch softbox. This is a softbox that I typically use whenever I travel because it folds nice and small inside my Peak Design backpack. Aside from the fact that it's pretty cheap at around $20 and it folds nice and small, there are three other reasons why I use this modifier, with the first being that it's pretty sturdy when it's mounted onto an adapter or onto my strobe. There's other modifiers that I use like the 31 by 31 inch softbox that if you shake it a little bit or there's a little bit of wind or a strong gust of wind, it might fall off. The second reason that I use this modifier is because although it's not the biggest modifier out there, it still provides nice soft light if you use double diffusion on the modifier. The third and last reason is since I didn't use a big modifier, I used a somewhat small one that still provided nice soft light. It's going to focus all that beam of light that your light's putting out and really utilize all that power to light the subject. Since this was a bright sunny day, I really needed to focus the beam of light that I'm going to be using. If I used something like a big seven foot umbrella, it would be nice in creating soft light, but it really wouldn't utilize all the power that the light would be putting out. Now that I think about it, we actually did use a seven foot umbrella at night with the 600 Pro with the modeling lamp because that was pretty much all we needed. At night, you don't really need a lot of power, so we only needed to use the modeling lamp but in the bright sunny day, I needed to do the exact opposite, use a smaller modifier and really use it at a high output. The light stand that I use is the Manfrotto Nano Stand. I actually have it right here. It's a stand that I bought recently before the workshop and I really wanted to see how, it, how well it did whenever I traveled. So I brought it with me, but I would rather have used something else because if you guys saw the behind the scenes footage of this shot, you would see that uh, Steve, who was helping me out, he held the stand over Jenny but you can see the stand barely holding on. It was bending. Uh, I would rather have used a C-stand, which somebody actually did have at the workshop, but I didn't find out until after I took this shot. 
So that was all the gear that I used, but one thing I wanted to mention specifically about the ND filter that I used is the reason why I used the ND filter to begin with is because whenever you enter high speed sync, your light kind of cuts down the power a bit because of the way that high speed sync works. Because I needed every ounce of light that my light was going to be offering, I needed to not be in high speed sync. So that's why I used an ND filter so that I can still use a wide aperture instead of narrowing down the f-stop to like f22 or something. The only cons to using an ND filter, which is why I don't use them, is because for one, you might experience a color cast, which is actually what I experienced and I'll show you guys in a second. And the second reason is I just find them to be a hassle. I have to re remember to bring one more thing and I need to get an ND filter for different lenses or use adapters to use one ND filter for all my different lenses. And I just preferred using high speed sync to shoot with wide apertures during the day, if I can. So what I'm gonna do now is show you guys the different shots in Lightroom that I took that led up to that final shot and explain a little bit about the thought process that was involved. So initially I thought I wanted to get a wider shot and I actually did get that wider shot with the Samyang 35 1.4, which is a lens that I was using every now and then at this workshop. And I took this shot and I was pretty happy with it, but I wanted to get something else. This is something that I took for the nice landscape area, you know, the nice area that I was working within, but I wanted something that really wowed me and I wasn't sure exactly what to do. It wasn't until I, you know, later on that I realized that I wanted to get some symmetry in there and really focus on Jenny. Because when I took this shot, I, I'm taking a landscape shot. In my opinion, it's kind of just not really highlighting Jenny and I wanted to focus on the subject. That's pretty much what I always like to do in my work. So I took this shot. I'll go ahead and just skip through the next couple of photos. At this point, I just changed the orientation into portrait orientation. I thought it was nicer because although those other spheres were in the shot uh, on the other photos, I didn't feel like they were really contributing or that they were too far to really have any sort of impact on the image. So I took this shot and this is when I decided that I really wanted to just focus on Jenny. Uh, no matter the lens, I wanted to really just get close. So because I shot with the Samyang 35 1.4 here, that, just, that literally meant me getting closer. I typically shoot with longer lenses, so it was something different for me. I was shooting and Jenny was just giving me different poses. She's an awesome model. I highly recommend you guys work with her if you ever get the chance. And she was just going ahead and just give me different things to work with. So I was just snapping away. And at this, this shot was actually one that I really liked and I was considering editing. All these different shots, in case you guys are wondering, are edited in the sense that I brought the exposure just a little bit up and I changed the colors of the blues, I believe, and brought the saturation up. But these are pretty much um, pretty close to straight out of camera. The only things that are changing in the shots that I'm showing you right now is just the composition, me getting further away or closer changing it into portrait orientation or landscape and Jenny's poses are changing as well. But in terms of lighting, that's the same thing. It's a very bright sunny day. So you'll still see the harsh shadows on her, but she's really rocking the poses. So I was just taking a lot of different shots. When I took this photo, I was really happy because I really liked her hand being up. I liked that pose direction and she actually did that on her own. And I was going to ask her to do it in the next couple of shots if she didn't just go ahead and create another pose that was really awesome and the one that I ended up working with. This is another shot that I was really liking and I might give to her and I hope if Jenny, if you're seeing this, you're, don't be mad that I didn't give you this photo. I will give it to you soon. But yeah, this photo was one I really liked because of her expression. Jenny has amazing expressions, which is why I really like working with her. And I was using, again, the Samyang 35, but I changed it up to the 85 in just a little bit. Jenny goes above and beyond for her photo shoots and this pose is actually something that might look easy, but it was pretty hard. Other models had tried it and they didn't really get the pose. So big props to Jenny. She got into this pose on her own and I was just taking shots. So I'll just go ahead and show you guys some of those shots. Ultimately, when I got into this framing right here for the 85 or with the 85, I knew that I wanted that pose or something similar to it. So I was just trying to figure out how to adjust that pose to get something that I really wanted. This shot and the next shot here are both natural light. And I knew I wanted to just get something else that nobody else could get unless they use lighting. So that's why after I took these two shots, I was, I was thinking I need to take a photo that I'm happy with that uses off camera flash because what my opinion is, is that everybody there at the workshop, if they're taking pictures of Jenny in the same spot and with the same lighting, which is the harsh lighting that we're working with, nobody's shots are going to be that dramatically different unless they edit them really differently. So I wanted something that was really unique in other words. So after I took those last two shots, I decided I needed to go ahead and just bring that light in. So I got the 600 pro, the 24 inch by 24 inch softbox with a double diffusion on the nano stand and I put it there. I think Ashley was helping me 
and she actually had a, a, a ladder that you guys can actually see in the shot right now. So this shot right here is basically just natural light with the light in the shot not firing. Then I went ahead and just adjusted, uh, actually you know what, you guys can actually see exactly how the shot looks like straight eye camera right here. And this is the adjusted version of that. So after I took that shot, I realized I needed to go ahead and just turn on the light, which I did, but it was at a low output from another shoot that I must have done. So it was around 164th power. So in this shot, you're seeing uh, the ambient a little bit darker because I, I believe I made the ND filter a little bit darker and it went ahead and just started to fire the light, which is why you're not really seeing much of a difference on her in the shadowed area. After I took that last shot, I went ahead and just adjusted to full power, which resulted in this shot. Her pose is actually really awesome, but what you can see is that there's a little bit of area on, towards the foot area where it's not being lit up. That's just nothing but natural light, which is, actually looks good, but it's not soft, which is something that I really, really like. So this was the next shot that I took and I was actually really happy with it. But one thing I wanted to mention to you guys is that throughout the different shots that I was taking, I was trying my best to stay in the exact same composition and not changing the focus either, because as you guys can see in the last couple of shots, there's a shadow going on on the sphere, the light's showing up in the corner, and I don't want those in the final images. So what I did with my, was do my best to stay exactly where I was. And once I took a shot that I was really, really happy with, I was gonna go ahead and just move the light away and try my best to get whoever is providing the shadow on the sphere to move out of the way as well so that I can take a shot and kind of use those shots without the, speed, without the um, shadow or the light and just put them over the final images so I can get rid of them. This is actually how the shot looked like to start with and I just adjusted the blues, the color temperature actually because of that color cast that the ND filter provided, a blue color cast. I adjusted it to be warmer and brighter which ultimately resulted in this shot. Since I was happy with that last shot, I took that plate shot that I mentioned just a second ago, and this is actually the plate shot. So don't focus on her pose. It's not something that was taken for the pose. It was just taken for the sphere and the sky. So up until this point, we still haven't taken the shot that I'm gonna be going over. And up until this point, we had the light at, at varying distances, and I wanted the light to be really close so it can really show up. So what you guys can see in this shot is that the light is pretty far away. I wanna see maybe five to six feet away. And I know that when you get closer to the subject with the light, it's gonna show up better. It's gonna utilize that power better. So I knew that I needed light closer. Although it was still at full power in this shot, it really wasn't hitting her as much as I wanted it to. So I went ahead and just got it closer after I took this one. This is actually, I believe this is the adjusted version of this shot. And this is the shot, how it looks like straight out of camera. When I finally took this shot, the light was much closer. So it was showing up on her skin better and I really liked the symmetry, and I really saw the potential that the shot could have, so I edited it, but I wanna show you guys the straight out of camera as well, which is this shot. The one thing that really stood out to me when I took the shot was the way that the light was hitting her and the shadows and all those different things, so that's why I really, really liked the shot. This shot is just the plate shot that I used to remove the shadows off the sphere and the light from the sky. One quick thing though, if you guys have been watching the timestamp, the capture time here on the, on the right, it's actually wrong, it's actually two hours ahead because that's how it is, the time differences between here and uh, California. So that was pretty much everything that I can explain about how the shot was created up until this point, but I do wanna show you guys how the shot was edited as well. So once I made those adjustments in Lightroom, I brought the photo into Photoshop, which is what you're seeing right here. You see that there's white areas on the bottom and on the right, because I adjusted the crop to be bigger than the photo itself, which resulted in those borders there. I wanted to create a different crop because I felt like she wasn't towards the center and I wanted, I want, I really wanted a symmetry shot and I wanted her to be in the center of that symmetry. So I extended the crop and I used the plate shot in the next shot to kind of just extend over the image and just mask the way the parts that were not really needed for that plate shot. I only needed the sphere, which you can see the sphere and the sky or the area with the light showing up to be removed. After I took this photo, I realized I needed to go ahead and just remove those distractions on the side. I needed to reduce those borders, get them away. And I just basically just extended the, the shot a little bit so you guys can see that's exactly what I did. I felt like her hair and her face and a little bit areas on her body were a little too dark. So I went ahead and just made them a little bit brighter. That's exactly what I did there. And then after that, I adjusted the colors because in the last shot here, you can see that there's a little bit of warmth to the shot and something that I originally wanted but I felt like a, a cooler tone would have been a lot cooler. So I went ahead and just did that using the color balance tool and it ended up with this right here. One thing that I typically do whenever I edit a shot is remove distractions that are gonna distract from the subject 
So when I got to this point, I realized I hadn't done that. And I started to really think about things that were just kind of just taking away the attention from the subject. So I went ahead and just removed the distractions, which is what you're seeing right here. Then in the next shot, I just went ahead and just did a little bit of frequency separation, which is something I do to just kind of remove or reduce a little bit of the blemishes. But in this shot, it actually helped in reducing the, the different little kind of um, indents on the sphere. So it was helpful in that as well. The very next thing that I did was I went ahead and did a little bit of dodge and burn, which is actually my favorite part of retouching. So you guys can see that shot right there. I, I really like it for adding contrast and brightening certain areas. And I know I haven't shot film before, but if I shot film, I think I would enjoy dodge and burn. At this point, I was struggling on whether or not I should bring up the exposure, but ultimately I did, which brought it to this level here. I also added a little bit of contrast. And after this, I removed a little bit of the blemishes, which is what you might see right here. It's very subtle. And after this, I wanted to go ahead and just adjust the photo in terms of liquify, which brought it from this to this. I know there's, it's a little bit of controversial about whether or not I should do that, but honestly, it's always making the model exactly how they look and feel. And that's pretty much what I always go for um, in terms of whenever I do any sort of thing like liquify. So when I got to this point, I started to look at the photo and see exactly or think, how could I improve this photo? And the thing that was sticking out to me was the colors were a little bit off. There's a little bit too much greens in her skin. So I went ahead and just adjusted the colors one more time, which led to this shot right here. I also adjusted the blues. And this right here, what you're seeing is actually the final version of the shot that I ended up editing. So that was pretty much everything that I could explain about how this photo was created. I hope you enjoyed the explanation. If you feel like I might have uh, missed something or didn't explain something clearly, definitely let me know in the comment section below so I can help you out. There was a bit of extra behind the scenes footage that I took either on my phone or actually on her phone. And also another photographer and cinematographer by the name of Ilya Feinstein. He actually recorded a lot of drone footage. So I'll go ahead and just add that to the video so you guys can see exactly where we're working at. If you guys could go ahead and just wait till the end of the video to see why I recommend and use Squarespace, I'd really appreciate it. One more thanks for watching this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Jenny B right there. 8600 Pro. 8600 Pro. Modding lamps on 100%. Right there's perfect. Right there's perfect. All right, one, two, three. All right, that's perfect. Um, can you move it out of the way? Yeah, I'm good. Now I just, now I just need a shot with Dawson's face. So there's Jenny. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> She's doing awesome. She's right there. And this is the light setup. 600 Pro with the 31 by 31. As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Squarespace and I've been personally using them for a while now, even creating my first website with them years ago. The reason why I decided to go with Squarespace was honestly because of how easy it was to use, but it has a lot to offer in addition to that. Squarespace all-in-one platform provides a resource that customers can use to claim a domain, build a website, sell online, and market their brand. They also have plenty of award-winning templates to choose from, which is perfect for photography so that you can display your images beautifully to potential clients. When I made my site, I went minimalistic and I kept it that way for a while, but I might revamp the site soon. Squarespace offers yet another award-winning feature that is 24-7 customer service, something that I took advantage of when I was building my website. I tend to be pretty savvy with websites. 
but needed a quick question answered so I reached out and I got help pretty quickly. If you've been thinking about setting up a website for your photography or cinematography, Squarespace makes it easy to set it up or transfer your domain even if it's third party. If you intend to sell items such as prints on your site, that's another thing Squarespace helps you out with as they allow you to easily manage your products, orders, and inventory. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com fjh to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.